Hello, what's happening everyone? William Johnson here. I'm getting ready to head about an hour and a half or so from my studio here, my place, to a friend of mine's studio. He runs a commercial studio and his name is Eric Myers. He runs an, a really cool studio called Sonic Boost Studios in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. And he's got a really neat studio. He's got some pretty cool uh, recently acquired gear there. He's doing a project, working on a project for an artist. I think the artist is out of Nashville, but I'm not sure. Anyhow, it, Nate Ridgeway is his name, and he's got a full-on project. I think it's well over 10 songs. So it might, might be like close to 18 songs. I don't know. Anyhow, I'm just doing some like orchestral feel type snare stuff on a song. So I'm going to pack up a couple things here and I'm headed out there and, uh, you know, work in the studio for about an hour or so and then head back home. All right. Here's Eric. He is setting up, setting some EQ and settings for the first pass for the snare stuff he's working on that beautiful vintage <laughs> neve that he recently acquired it's a 1977 model i believe interesting history it actually spent about 15 or 16 years at lucas ranch working on empire strikes back and return of the jedi and several other movies and there's a chewbacca hanging out so this is a beautiful really neat history there and there's obi-wan hanging on <laughs> All right. So that's the idea though. Gotcha. Do one more. All right, here I was getting ready. I was setting up with the first snare. This is an actual snare that I brought, my Gretsch Maple snare. I love this drum. And on top, you see that white microphone. That's a, a vintage late 60s model, I think, maybe early 70s, late 60s Sennheiser 421. Beautiful microphone, man. And that was a hearback that I was using, uh, the hearback system. Some of you may remember that. So I was just getting my levels set up. This was like the first or second pass, and I was kind of warming up and trying to figure out what exactly I was going to play. I had actually brought a Cooperman frame drum with me, Cooperman Tar, 18-inch Tar, I believe it is. And I had that on top of the snare. I actually placed it on top of the snare. Then I put like a, a large fabric patch on top of that. And when I played that, I got some sympathetic snare Ooh. snare sounds with Ooh, the yeah. snare underneath yeah, the frame drum. Yeah. All right, here is the second drum. And it's actually the one that we ended up using. It was an old drumline snare. And it was in pretty bad shape, but it was repaired. And even though not all the lugs were even connected, but man, it, it did it do the trick. It was a really nice snare. I wish I could have this drum. That worked great for it this. It did. It was that sounds like the right thing. Yeah. That's amazing. And I mean, I haven't even tuned it. We didn't tune anything. It just sounds great for this song. Yeah, a lot of that, I didn't even tune the other one. But yeah, I, and if you already... look at it, William, like, there's, like, parts Wait. of it are missing. Like, yeah, dude. <laughs> I wanted to jump in and add something. That white drum that I was using was actually a drum that is in Eric Meyer's studio at Sonic Boost. I brought the Gretsch drum, the yellow uh, brown maple drum there originally and I actually put a frame drum over it at first and then dampened it to try to get this, uh, this different effect, almost like an old field drum and make it just sound a little different, a little drier. Just an experiment, decided to scratch that and you know just things we do in the studio and then I went ahead and just tried it uh, with the wallet on top. I liked the way it sounded, just the right amount of weight. And then I tried that white drum. This is an old, an old high school, inexpensive snare drum that had been rehauled, but not completely done. There was actually a couple lugs on the bottom that weren't even connected, and then it had a felt on the top. And I don't know, whatever, whatever the gentleman who uh, overhauled it, or almost completely overhauled it, or whatever he did to it, it sounds amazing. That thing. It's 
probably some kind of mystery wood. It wasn't completely tight. It didn't even have uh, traditional or like l uh, tension lugs on there. So you can tune the drum all the way around and to itself, as you can hear in some of our banter there in the video. But man, that drum sounded so beautiful. I actually fell in love with it and wanted to buy it from Eric, but it already belongs to someone else. So. Uh, it, 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 my, my press rolls there, my buzz rolls probably sounded horrible. I think it, it sounded pretty good with the actual mix that we did on the song, especially seeing, uh, thinking about the vision and what Eric's gonna do with the stereo spread and some EQ and some effects and, and whatnot and how it'll help tie the horns in with the vocals and the rest of the track. So it was a fun experiment and, also, Eric has a M149 Neumann, and I just absolutely love that microphone. I love doing everything, vocals, percussion, you name it. Great microphone. You can see why I was doing all the ambient stuff in there. So, yeah, fun day at the studio. Great. Like, it just sounds right, no matter what the source is. And you got all these different, on the back of it, you got all these different um, roll-offs. It's yeah. not just a roll-off. So you can roll off at 20 hertz to oh, just really? take rumble off wow. all the way up to 80 hertz. Um, and then you've got all these different patterns on the mic. The good ones. All right. The little... Oh, I like these. I almost bought these not long ago. Some of these. Yeah, let me set this up. let me jump in here real quick. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm like, ah, I'm all up in your face. Sorry about that. So. I went in the vocal booth to add some nice percussive things in there. There's about four songs that are strung together on one side of the LP. It's going to be an 18 song uh, project album and he's printing, Nate is printing it on vinyl actually. So it's really cool. And in between these four songs, there's these in cinematic instrumental interludes, if you will. And Nate and Eric wanted me to add some percussion. Uh, you know, some like chimes, keys, seeds, shakers, whatever. Just some stuff that's really nice, ambient, soundscape type of things going on there. So Eric Myers actually live streamed while I was in there doing that. And he had three different cameras. So it was pretty cool. You can actually hear the sound coming off the board while watching me in the vocal booth and outside the vocal booth and at the mixing desk. So once I get a hold of some of that footage, I'll share that on the channel here. And that was pretty much the last thing that we did. And then we wrapped up the studio session. So it was really a really nice day there. Anyhow, I wanted to share this with you. I go to different studios from time to time. And I think it would be pretty cool to share a little bit of the behind the scenes. or Just the experience of, you know, what I do in the studio and some of the sessions with some of you that watch the videos on the channel. And perhaps some of you that are wanting to, that haven't done a whole lot of sessions, but are wanting to do sessions and just seeing a little bit of what happens, some of the things. Sometimes some sessions are a little more structured than others. This one was a nice mix of Nate having some ideas already and Eric and also wanting ideas from me and then us coming up with stuff on the spot that particular day. So it's really nice when all of these things come together and it's a nice vibe with everyone. It was a really great experience. I love it when I have a great studio experience. So anyhow, thanks Eric. Thanks Nate for inviting me. I hope that those of you who watched this, you know, I hope you had a good time watching the video. Comment below. If you enjoyed this, I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to see more of this and maybe even more detail, more things happening in the studio, a little bit more background, uh, then let me know and I'll, I'll add some stuff like this. I do go outside of my studio here and record in other studios on occasion. So anyways, thank you all for watching. I love you. God bless you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you today and I'll see you soon.